Good evening and welcome to the Rase Music Courses Wednesday evening concert. Normally we would be in Rase House on the Hebridean island of Rase as part of the annual bass clarinet and bassoon courses um, and that is run by myself, Anthea Wood on bassoon and Anthony Clare on piano. Um, but due to the ongoing pandemic for the second year we're not able to be on Rase. Um, however we've taken the course online this year and we're very grateful to be in the wonderful Firth Hall at the University of Sheffield um, to, to stream our tutors concert to you this evening. Um, it's, a, it's a huge privilege to be back playing with Anthea and Anthony after two years. Uh, which is when we last did the course concert. Um, and uh, just a huge thank you to um, the University of Sheffield concerts team um, and everyone who is helping to record and stream the concert today. Um, we really, really appreciate being able to be back doing the course, albeit 500 miles away. <laughs> So we've got um, about 45 minutes um, of music for you uh, this, uh, this evening. And we're going to start with a bass clarinet and piano piece by the American composer David Nathaniel Baker. And uh, Baker uh, was born in 1931 in Indianapolis, um, and he is a jazz musician, educator, composer, conductor. And he wrote um, the sonata and then in 2001. It's very much in the jazz style. And we're going to play you his On Wings of Song, which is the second movement. Uh, this is just such a beautiful piece of uh, bass clarinet and piano music. Um, and I think a piece that needs to be heard much, much more.
I'm now going to play a solo piano piece by the Australian composer Peter Sculthorpe. The title of the piece is Gili, and the piece is a transcription of an Aboriginal melody. The meaning of Gili is whistling duck in a billabong. I hope you enjoyed the piece.
So the next piece in this evening's programme is a piece for Anthony and myself, and it is uh, the Sicilian e Allegro Giocoso by Gabriel Grovele. Um, Grovele was a pianist and accompanist, and surprisingly enough, I expected by the style of this piece, which is very lyrical and then shows off the sort of bouncy staccato things that bassoon can do, I was expecting, expecting it to be late 19th century, but it's actually... Um, sort of a third of the way through the 20th century. It's 1930 when it was written, and it's one of a handful of um, chamber pieces that he, he wrote. He was a very accomplished pianist and accompanist himself, and um, a few landmark things for him. He's, he was responsible for the very first performance of Ravel's Mother Goose, so he uh, conducted that. And he also, from 1914, so only one year after the Rite of Spring, he conducted at the Opera de Paris. Um, this, as well as the more famous Sanson bassoon sonata, is dedicated to the bassoonist Leon Latelier.
next piece um, I'm going to play is the transcription of Eric Dolphy's improvisation to Billie Halliday's God Bless the Child. I'm going to make a strong statement now and say if it wasn't for Eric Dolphy's improvisation, I probably wouldn't be standing here. I think it is one of the most important bass clarinet solos in the history of bass clarinet. Um, this improvisation um, provided inspiration for the contemporary movement of bass clarinet. Um, it certainly inspired the great bass clarinetist Harry Spane to specialize. Um, and he then built up a career, won competitions, and set up um, a teaching school in Rotterdam before moving to Amsterdam. Um, and many of us can trace our roots back to Spane and therefore Dolphy. Um, Dolphy was also one of the great jazz players of the 50s and early 60s as well. Um, a fantastic saxophonist, flautist, and of course, bass clarinet. He sadly died far too young. He was in his 30s in 1964 and was on a European tour. And he went to Germany and he suffered a diabetic coma. And unfortunately, at that time, a young black jazz American performer, it was assumed that he was on drugs. And unfortunately, he went into a coma and died. But what he has left is an incredible legacy of bass clarinet recordings, just amazing improvisations, and um, numerous versions of this God Bless the Child that we have since borrowed, transcribed, and perform ourselves. So I'm going to play one of the transcriptions. Um, and really, when I play this, it's a homage to Dolphy. And it's also, every time I play I like to think of Harry Spane, who we lost a few years ago as well.
the next piece is um, written by the fantastic composer Piers Hallowell, who Sarah works with a lot in her Hard Rain Ensemble over in Belfast. And I know that Piers teaches over there at the university as well. Um, this program note that um, Piers has written is very interesting. Uh, we also had a very uh, entertaining and interesting Zoom meeting a couple of weeks ago about the piece where we discussed some of the ideas um, in the piece. Um, All About Snoob was written for, for Jeremy Crump, who is um, a very accomplished amateur bassoonist in London, I think. And it says, as the first in, in the Lockdown Commissioning Triangle series for Coma, which is contemporary music for all, during the spring of 2020. And Piers had the idea of bringing these pieces um, for amateurs to play throughout lockdown. But I can certainly tell you that what he's written certainly presented lots of challenges <laughs> throughout. So, um, yeah, and it, it's, it has, it's basically about a character. So all about Snoob is, it's about the character of Snoob is a louche character, a wit of some learning, a flaneur, which is a fantastic word, who is somewhat now down at heel, the type who seems to know everybody without having any obvious profession. Everyone runs into a Snoob but no one knows much of Snoob's history. And such characters add color to the tapestry of others' lives, but seem to lack any cl clear framework to their own. In chance encounters, they point out things we'd not thought of, even things we wish we had not thought of. But then they're gone, as if only to exist for that gadfly purpose, stinging us into seeing things through others' imagination. Such characters leave much of what they feel hidden away. Maybe they only exist at all in our own consciousness. So this is all about Snoob. Thank you. 
We're going to finish with the three others playing and we're going to perform um, a Scottish themed end to our program um, and this is by the British composer James Ray um, and Jim had said to me well over a year ago oh, would you play my uh, Caledonia suite on Rasa he says it's been done several times south of the border um, but has yet to receive um, a premiere in Scotland um, and especially on an island. Well, unfortunately, we've not quite made it north of the border in person, but we're very much there in spirit tonight. Um, this is a three movement suite. I'm sure that you will recognize all of the three pieces. There's the High Road to Gaelic, Ye Banks and Braes, and My Love, She's But a Lassie Yet. Uh, once again, a huge thanks to the University of Sheffield Concerts for hosting us this evening. Um, it's just been amazing to be able to put this concert together. Um, we hope that everyone listening on Rase is uh, staying well. Um, I can't wait to be back up there hopefully later in the year. And we'll be back with the music courses hopefully next April, where we'll be back in Rase House um, and celebrating a return to normality with a good Rase whiskey and a few Kulin beers. Thank <laughs> you. 